Currently, only 2% of global electricity comes from solar power, and 90% of that comes from crystalline silicon-based solar panels. But what if I told you about a material that was lighter, more efficient, and simpler to produce at a lower cost? Researchers have developed a new way of enhancing the stability and performance of perovskites. Remember those? So why are new perovskite panels the future of solar energy, and how efficient are these solar cells? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel, friends. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started with today's content. Researchers from the University of Missouri in collaboration with scientists from the University of the Western Cape in South Africa and physicists at the U.S. Department of Energy's Argonne National Laboratory have developed a new way to make hybrid perovskites. It's mainly a combination of organic and inorganic semiconducting materials that could form the basis of new solar cells or other electronic devices. Organic inorganic hybrid perovskites have become increasingly attractive to the materials and electronics communities, especially over the past 10 years or so, said MU professor Suchismita Guha, the lead author of the study. Now the state-of-the-art solar cells that are used for halide perovskites Guha and her collaborators improved the methods for making lead halide perovskites. Previous techniques for making these thin for making these thin film perovskites required liquid processing using solvents, which rendered the films susceptible to degradation when exposed to air. Additionally, with this prior manufacturing process, one of its molecules undergoes a change to its structure, causing performance limitations in real-world operating conditions. With this new technique, the researchers were able to prevent the change, holding the affected molecule in a stable structure throughout a large range of temperatures. Additionally, the new technique rendered the perovskite air stable, making it appropriate for a potential solar cell. Still, price is something we should all consider carefully. That being said, will it be cheaper than a Tesla solar panel? Solar panels may now be made with perovskite sheets that cost only 25 5 cents per square foot, making the technology commercially viable. It's 105 times cheaper than Tesla solar panels. The cost of the solar panel per square foot of this system is $26, $26.15 cents per square foot, which is notably higher than the $21.85 per square foot that Tesla said would be what most homeowners can expect to pay. How much energy can you get from sunlight in the form of percentages? That said, perovskite can harvest a wider range of light, including high-energy blue photons, whereas silicon can only absorb red light. Within the past few years, the efficiency of these perovskite-structured hybrid compounds has skyrocketed up to 25%, surpassing that of some silicon solar cells. More than 2,000 hours under harsh conditions that are required, uh, and, and these have efficiencies of almost 25%. The most efficient modern silicon solar panels like Tesla's home solar panel only works at best at around 20% efficiency. So if these perovskite cells were to be put into market, they would set a legitimate new record for efficiency, surpassing all current solar panel types, which are mainly silicon. And with a 25% efficiency, how much energy does that translate to when gathering from sunlight. Let's first give you an idea of Tesla's solar panels. Its large array solar panel uses 36 panels to cover a roof area of 780 square feet. These panels combine to produce an output power rating of 14.4 kilowatts. With a difference of 5%, it's estimated that a 780 square foot perovskite solar panel will generate about 15.12 kilowatts. That's a point 72 kilowatt difference on top of Tesla's solar panel in the same area. Moreover, according to the researchers, perovskite solar panels achieved no loss in a thousand hours of aging at 85 degrees Celsius. Also, no loss in a thousand hours of light soaking at an open circuit and less than 10% loss in 1,000 hours of operation at the maximum power point by employing a 
new technique. What's this new technique you're asking? I'm not sure because it's not written in my script, so maybe we'll find out next year. In any case, we can see that these new perovskite cells sound very feasible in the future. But is there going to be any other application? Aside from being solar roofing, that is. Perovskites hold promise for creating solar panels that could be easily deposited onto most surfaces, including flexible and textured ones. Stable and efficient perovskite cells could ultimately allow solar energy to be used in more applications, from powering the developing world to charging a new generation of wearable devices. Yachts that are powered by electricity could have their range radically improved with more efficient, lightweight, integrated perovskite solar panels. We could also see integrated solar panels on trucks, buses, and cars, as well as any other applications where sunlight is not yet considered energy dense enough to provide meaningful power. Moreover, we could see perovskites for utility scale energy production. It'd be possible to reduce the cost of electricity to less than two cents per kilowatt hour if they could create a 30 year long perovskite module. Preventing the phase change seems to be the key to ensuring improved device performance, Guha said. By maintaining a stable structure throughout the operating temperature window, we show the way to an improved and potentially useful perovskite. So when is this breakthrough of solar technology going to be available on the market? This research used resources from the Advanced Photon Source, a US DOE Office of Science user facility operated for the DOE Office of Science. You're probably wondering what the heck did he just say? Well, I don't know either, but let me tell you what Professor Guha said. It took people 40 years to double the efficiency of silicon. Perovskite caught up with silicon in just 10 years. The technology is proven and the future is bright for solar energy, pun intended. However, the future is still a few years away before this technology is ready to be mass produced and introduced to the public. But we still hope it will come out in 2023. I, I imagine that uh, another five years and we should see some some products coming out. So how are perovskite panels going to be developed by companies? For the commercialization of this technology, NREL established the US Manufacturing of Advanced Perovskites Consortium in 2020, collaborating with three universities and six thin film solar companies, the majority of which are startups. How do you feel about the new perovskite solar panels? And when do you think they'll actually be released? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching and for all of your support of our channel. As always, if you enjoyed our video, please leave us a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs and green technology. Once again, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next year. Ha 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 That joke never gets old. Oh, please. Please, somebody end me. Take care. Be safe.